Hey everyone, Cody here, and uh, welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing this kind of almost like a stippled painting. Uh, the col colors I'll be using today are an espresso type color, uh, a light cream color, and then another cream color. I think the the dark brown is like it's called espresso something. Um, the kind of not the really light one that you see here, but the, the one in between is like called coffee and cream or something like that. And then the really light one is called like regal cream. So it's like an off white. So basically all kind of like coffee inspired colors. I've used them before. Um, I used them in the one where I did like the scraped squares, uh, with the squeegee. Um, now the problem I'm going to tell you right off the bat that, well, first off, if you haven't seen the other video, if I haven't posted it or you haven't seen it, um, I talked about how I kind of did this stippled painting that I absolutely loved and I really do like it and I still have it. And, you know, I'm, I was very excited and impressed with it. I had a lot of fun making it. So I'm going to make more of them. And this is one of those. However, uh, the problem here, and you can see that I'm trying to kind of offset this board. One, the board is warped. Uh, but if I don't, if I don't tape the paintings down, then they move. So I have to tape them to something and I can't tape them to the, to the table because the table's already got too much paint on it. Um, and it rips them and it's obviously not flat. So I have to put them on something. So I put them on these little boards. Um, but the problem with this paint is that because I used all these colors for a poured painting that I did for my wife, they're all super diluted. So I realized that when I do poured paintings, I have to do kind of half water, half paint. Um, and so these, these paints are super diluted. Um, so was, this was kind of the first one of a, a set of them. And you'll see that from this point on, the next few videos will be this kind of like dabbing type painting. And I don't mean dabbing like the, uh, like the motion that the kids do, but dabbing the paint, you know, over, across the painting and it, it creates these really cool paintings. Um, uh, but the problem with this one is that the paint was too thin, so it was very liquidy. Um, so it's sad because the painting looks kind of cool um, when when I make it here, like when you see it. But because it's so liquidy, it, it ran like over the whole painting and it started running together. So in the end, uh, like afterwards, it kind of got ruined because all the paint pulled together because it got so wet. So it was unfortunate, but I kind of learned from it. So I can't use paint that's diluted, um, at least not that much, but probably not at all because I did some more after this that I really, really liked and I didn't dilute the paint at all and they still kind of ran together. So I ran into a few issues kind of doing this. One is that because of the weight of the paint, it starts to warp the paper. So this watercolor paper I like it and everything, but the problem is, is that I use so much paint and the paint is so wet that it, it warps the paper. So it kind of creates a problem because then the, the paint kind of pulls together. So I did a bunch of these paintings last night. I actually woke up like super early in the morning. Um, I couldn't sleep. So I got up at like two o'clock this morning and did a bunch of paintings. Um, and, and those are the ones you'll see in the next, you know, videos after this. But, uh, you know, I realized that a lot of these paintings were kind of doing this. These paintings that I was making were kind of doing that where they were pooling together. Um, and so I kind of came up with an idea of maybe how to solve that. Uh, either one, I need to do it during the day when it's hotter. Um, two, I need to leave the tape on because I take the tape off so that it doesn't stick to it. But I think maybe they need to leave the tape on so it stays flatter. I don't know if it's going to help. I'm going to try it today. Um, or I think what I'll probably do is get one of those little butane torches that people use um, on like poured paintings. Because I've never used one. Um, so I'll probably pick up one of those and try that on the paintings and see if that helps it um, like dry faster so that it doesn't run together. I don't know. I've never used it. So I guess we'll see. But ultimately, yeah, this is, I mean, this is it. So just kind of taking the paint and kind of breaking up the solid blocks of color with some of the other colors around. But I, I really like this effect. Um, it's just, it's fun to make them. 
it's super easy. It's a ton of paint though. I will say that. Um, but it, it just makes these really cool dynamic paintings. And, you know, there's a guy that I follow in the UK that does paintings and I think that he uses this method a lot. So I could see why, um, I didn't really know how he did it, but I, I'm sure it's not exactly the same, but after doing it, I kind of had a good idea. So anyway, I really like this painting or I liked it before it kind of ran together. It was really cool and I'm going to do more of these. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll talk more about it then. So take care guys. See you then. Bye.